Good morning. I'm down here, made it from Branson to Camdenton. I'm heading home this afternoon, but being Sunday, I definitely wanted to take some time and talk about Jesus rising from the dead because it's the greatest thing um, as far as defying physics, defying the laws of this world uh, that anybody has ever done. And there's some things really deep into his resurrection that, that a lot of, I've never really heard many pastors bring up. So we're just going to look at where we left off. Matthew 28, starting in verse 1. And after the Sabbath, the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothes as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Now, before we dig into this, I do want to point out that, um, you know, I brought up Wednesday, that, that he died on Wednesday night. And then he spent Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night in the grave and Thursday day, Friday day, and Saturday in the grave. And then sometimes Saturday night, he rose from the dead. And now Mary shows up at his tomb early Sunday morning. Some accounts say before the sun came up. And it's the day after the Sabbath. Um, so the first day of the week, so that's Sunday. Now, there's, so I want to just make that point that, that, that he spent three days and three nights in the grave. And, and we've talked about over the last three days and three nights. But there's something that takes place here because not only is risen, but when they run into him shortly after, there's something in John's account that he says that nobody else uh, is brought up. So we're going to go to John's version of this account. We're going to pick it up in John 20, verse 11. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. When they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposing him to be a gardener said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Now, this is extremely significant because this is the debt piece. This is the price being paid piece because it is a blood atonement. When, if you looked at the Holy of Holies, the place where God dwells in the temple, the only time that the high priest can get in there was he had to sacrifice a, 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 a lamb for himself. And then he could go in and in the presence of holy God, he sacrifices a spotless, perfect lamb for the atonement of his people. And that's the only one that's in the presence of the Lord. And here what Jesus is saying is I have to ascend to pay this debt. It's a blood debt. And then we can see that blood debt being paid in Revelation 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside on the back sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain. And that is that payment. That is the atonement for the sins of the world um, in, in the, the presence of God. Because what Jesus says here. Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. So he has to pay that blood debt. So once he rose from the dead, when like he just rose from the dead and then went and hung out with everybody, he rose from the dead sometime Saturday night. He had to pay that blood debt. He had to give that blood debt 
to pay for the sins of this world. It, it's not a figurative thing. He literally had to give his blood as an atonement for the sins of this world. So him rising from the dead was really just kind of the beginning of paying that atonement. And we have to see it. And John's really the only one that Jesus says, well, wait a second, I got it. This, you can't touch me, don't touch me. Because this blood on me, this well, who I am, this body, this sacrifice has to be paid first. And then once that debt is paid, then I'll be, then, you know, then y'all will see me around Jerusalem and all that. And it's a fascinating thing. And, and they don't really get into how all that works, but, but I believe that when we see that slain lamb in the, in the throne of God, that what we're seeing is we're seeing Jesus at some point when he rose from the dead, took that slain body and he paid that debt, that blood debt. And then it was finished. And then that atonement was done. So I hope this video helps. It's so important that we see really what it is he did. It's, you know, he, he, he laid down his life for you and me, but it was at a cost. Like there was a cost to be paid from the beginning of time from Adam and Eve on. There had to be a blood sacrifice for the atonement of the sins of the people and him being the ultimate sacrifice had to give that blood sacrifice and pay for that atonement in the holy presence of God. It had to be in his holy presence. It couldn't just be over there, over here, it had to be in his holy presence, just like the high priest does on the day of atonement. So any insight on that, uh, definitely put that below, but praise the Lord, he has risen. He has risen. That's the greatest thing. I mean, it defies all the physics of the universe and it's awesome. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Feel called to support this channel with Patreon, that link is below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.